You know I'm right. The podcast that uncovers the origin stories of some of the biggest names in sports, media, reality TV, entertainment, and so much more. Nick Durst here along with Joe Calabrese and Joe. I'm excited for our guest today. You, of course, are Italian, so you're very familiar with the mafia. And our guest today also is very familiar with the mafia. Absolutely. Uh, he comes from a long line of elite LSU athletes. We got Shaq, we got Pistol Pete Maravich, we got Alex Bregman. Uh, more recently, we got Livy Dunn and Paul Skeens. Uh, but you may know him, Ben Simmons. <laughs> I said elite athletes from LSU. Uh, but I have a friend who I grew up with. He, he went to LSU. So go Tigers before we introduce him. Um, uh, but he's most known for his prowess in swimming, uh, former gold medalist, Jeff World Records. Uh, but our audience may know him uh, from this most recent season of Big Brother 25. Uh, he was the runner up, did not win, even though he had a resume worthy of a winner's resume. So we're really, really happy to have him on. We've had a couple of house guests on with us recently. We're going to have a lot of fun. We welcome Matt Klotz to the program. Matt, what's up, man? How are you? I'm just chilling. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Matt, we're, we're pumped to have you on. We're going to talk Big Brother, but first, we want to dive in head first into the water here. When did you start swimming, and when did you realize, wow, I'm really good at this. Nobody <laughs> is as good as me as far as my competition. I started swimming when I was nine years old, and then I went year-round because my sister was a swimmer first, so like I did every sport growing up, like karate, soccer, basketball, track, um, but swimming kind of stuck out the most. Uh very popular sport because I was born in uh, California. So it's a very popular sport in California. Um, and it was just kind of for fun and for a while. And then in junior year in high school, I was also, I was like actually short and I got a like, big growth spurt in high school. And then I just got like six, two all of a sudden gained like 20 pounds. So I started getting really good at swimming. And then we kind of started saying like, my sister went to Alabama for swimming mm. and Oh, I rivalry, rivalry. Uh, but I went to LSU <laughs> um, when she went there she was telling me about like you know the SEC and all that and that really wanted me to okay I really want to go to college for swimming you know I was like that is so cool like you know you get all these fun stuff you get to you know football games you get all these perks and I started trying really hard in junior year and I started getting a lot better um, I was on such a growth curve actually I took a gap year after high school to continue training uh, and so I took that year and got better and better. And then I got to LSU for swimming and I thought it was perfect because my sister's Bama, I go LSU, a little rivalry right there. There's no way I was going to go to Bama with my sister. I'm not going to college with my sister. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the thing. I kind of followed my, my sister's footsteps uh, in swimming and I'm very competitive. So I was like, okay, I got to beat my sister. You know, she made Olympic trials. So I, I started trying to make it Olympic trials and I made it. Uh, so she kind of pushed me to be a better swimmer. So let's talk about your uh, attending LSU. You work in the SEC athletic shirt over there. Uh, yeah. So was it, were you, was your heart locked in on LSU the whole time? Uh, were there other schools that you were considering, maybe other scholarship opportunities? Yeah, there was a lot of schools I was looking at. Uh, I was looking at Auburn, Tennessee, a little bit of Texas A&M, um, kind of just all over, like a lot of schools. Um, I think, I was just really driven of just wanting to be in the SEC. So I was really focused on the SEC schools um, because the late give a lot of academic support and that's something I needed because of my disability. So I really wanted to go in SEC school because of the, obviously the sports, but also the academic support they give the athletes. So that was a big focus for me. Um, LSU just kind of stood out because, you know, you have all these amazing seller elite athletes that come out of there and there's just a lot of tradition there there's a lot of culture um it was just the best fit for me when I went on that recruiting trip I fell in love with it right away Death Valley Go Tigers everything yeah. Matt, Matt who do you think does it better or is the more famous Go Tigers is it is it you in Big Brother or is it Ed Orgeron Coach O what was the question? Is it uh, Coach O or yeah, who does the who says Go Tigers better you or him uh, I mean he's the he's you know, it's Coach O, because he got that voice you can't remake. He, he, does, it, he does it best, but yeah, I'm, I did it on reality TV, so that helped a lot. You know, right now it's funny because everyone's like, because I'm in Baton Rouge right now, so everyone's like, 
we love that you said go Tigers every week and like everyone noticed that. So that was You're awesome. definitely helping the uh, enrollment rate. A lot of people apply into the school thanks to you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Ellis, you better pay me now. Yeah. <laughs> between between Joe Burrow, we got Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase recently. We got yeah. Matt. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the LSU family is growing, uh, produced an elite athlete. So I wanted to talk to you about key differences between uh, competition-wise, the Def Olympics and the Olympics. And if all things were equal, how would you fare uh, in the regular Olympics? Also, regular Olympics, I was trying, I'm trying out for Hungary because I have dual citizenship with them. Uh, I mean, USA is the hardest to make. It is, I mean, the USA team has world record holders, like the fastest this planet has ever had. Um, so that is very hard. Um, so I wanted to do it for Hungary because my dad's side of the family. Um, it's still pretty hard because Hungary is like still like top 10, top five countries in swimming. Um, but with that, it's, it's definitely a lot different than the deaf swimming, of course. Um, cause deaf swimming is, it's deaf swimming is always every year after the Olympic year. So there's the 2024 Olympics, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there's the 2024 Olympics coming up in Paris and then 2025 there's Tokyo Death Olympics um so right now I mean this is the hard thing right now and it's being realistic I just got out of 115 day you know being trapped in a house with no pool and working out I gained some weight I'm out of you know the rhythm and I've got four months to be back at my peak and be on my game 100 percent so what I know is I'm still going to train but if it doesn't work out, that's okay because I'm still going to go for 2025 no matter what, which is Devon Olympics because I want to get the um, the last record and it's uh, the most the most medals ever in Def Olympics history. I'm at 22 and it's 30 for that record, so I need to get eight more. Are you going to go for eight different events in the next Olympics or you think two more yeah, Def Olympics? Yeah, do that. I mean – I, the, the last one I went to Brazil in 2021, it gets confusing because the uh, COVID year. So it was actually in 2022. I got 14 wow. at Olympics and that broke the most in a single games. Um, so now I just need to get eight more. And I really want to do that just because of the whole being a deaf advocate and all that. What, uh, what stroke is your specialty? Uh, my specialty is backstroke, sprint backstroke. And then my side like stroke is freestyle sprint freestyle 50 nothing over that so it's like just one lap all right have you been back in a pool since getting out of the big brother house and what was it like if you <laughs> no, did the first time? no i haven't actually because oh, i've been to the place i just got back to baton rouge like a week and a half ago i actually just stopped by the pool yesterday to see all my teammates and the coaches uh a big group of us uh at lsu swimmers are at uh, us open right now so oh there are a lot there right now uh so i'm gonna go see them again on monday when they get back and then the thing is like i'm going to dallas next week la in a couple of days after that and then me and jag are going to canada in, in two weeks oh. so like there's a lot of stuff going on right now where i can't be in the pool every day five hours of training so right. it's overwhelming so joe do you remember a few years ago when i did celebrity big brother and it was, uh, I think it was Olympic year. Ryan Lochte was on the show. And they yeah, set up like a, a little hot tub for him. And he was just swimming. I saw them do that. They didn't do it for me. <laughs> I should have did it for you, man. But I don't know. If I was really there for 100 days. Somebody. I could have used that. Right. <laughs> tough, then, Lola Jones was there, too. Good. She was. was. That's right. Yeah. LSU grad. Yeah. It's, I mean, again, like I said, you know, it's a long list of elite LSU grads. Matt, quick question. Uh, so what would your, your training regimen heading into the next one look like? What does my training look like right now? In heading into yeah. This what, 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 ideally, where would you like it to be as your training and heading into that? Um, right now, obviously this next month could be pretty hectic. Um, but once I start training like, I'm literally someone that trains like five hours a day. So I'm going to be going back into that rhythm. I'm going to be training five hours a day. I'm going to be on a diet or like strictly cutting out a lot of stuff because um, that's just where I'm at, like my peak shape, my peak performance and everything. And it's like, it's like a plan and like this plan works. So like I already have a plan a formula that works. So I just got to go back to that now um, after all this chaos going on right now. And that's the plan. Um, you know, I'm, we'll see in a couple months, like where I'm at, but there's a lot going on. So I may just opt out Olympics just because there's so much going on. Um, 
but no matter what, I'm not going to opt out in the 2025 swimming. Yeah. All right. So when did you start watching Big Brother as a fan? As a fan, uh, actually, I I watched a lot of Survivor growing up, like since I was a child, and I watched like one season long, long, like couldn't even remember which one it was. Um, and then in 2020, I believe I watched season 20, and that's when I fell in love with Tyler. I was a big Tyler fan, and so was uh, Joe. Maybe. He got screwed over so bad. Oh, the worst. He should have won. Uh oh, Tyler. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know, I know. I saw that. I know. I was like, yeah, robbed. My boy got robbed. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Tyler. And when I watched him play, I was just like, okay, I feel like shockingly I got the same place as him. Uh, I was like, I'm being like, I'm gonna be kind of like him a little bit. Um, you know, I haven't even watched my season yet. I haven't had time to watch it, so um you're gonna need like 70 hours to watch your season i've got a lot yeah that's a lot i've been every episode so it's a lot of them to watch did it feel as long in the house as it did for us watching it felt like it was just never ending it it, i would say like the first like 50 days was just so like i guess nerve-wracking like every day it was just like what's what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and then like those last of the days it got boring in a sense because you're just waking up doing the same thing, the same pattern. Every Thursday, it's the live evictions. Every Saturday, you're playing Vito's. Every Thursday, you're playing HOH. Everything was just the same. Um, and so it gets a little bit boring and there's less people, less and less, less people. So it gets quieter in the house. Um, you know, like I don't even care about playing pool anymore and bumper pool. Like, you know, you could only do so many activities in the house that you just get bored. Um, yeah. So it, it felt, it definitely felt long because a hundred days, like the last 20 days felt forever. It was like, I felt like this was my life. I'm never getting out of this house, you know, at some point. So what was the process like for you to audition for Big Brother? Uh, so when they reached out to me in 2020 and um, you know, I took the chance, but it was really late in the process. So I didn't get that. And then <clears throat> I uh, reached, I got reached out by other people from that. And then it went to like a Netflix show uh, called 21, 20, 20 somethings. And it was about like COVID and, and uh, Houston area. And I no Austin area. And I got there to the, the, the halfway part, but then I opted out because of all the COVID stuff that was going on. And then I did Survivor, applied for Survivor, made semifinals, met Jeff Prost on a Zoom call. Um, and then Love Island, I got the finals on that. Um, and so like, but the thing is with all those interviews and all those like practice and stuff, I kept getting really far, but I wasn't nailing it. And like with this year, this time I, when I, when I got reached out for big brother this season, I just like nailed it. Like, just like sold myself, you know, you have to throw yourself out there. You know, like for me, I usually like take like five, 10 minutes to warm up, but like with the interviews, you just gotta be on it. You have to sell yourself. And that's what I did this time. And I think that's what did the trick. Take notes, Joe. That's what you got to do if you if you try out. <laughs> right. Nick wants me to be the competition show person. We'll get there, hopefully. Uh, so, Matt, uh, staying in shape in the Big Brother house, uh, as somebody who's been a competitive athlete, mm-hmm. especially for a major Division One program, uh, you guys are certainly built differently. So it's one thing to stay in competitive shape. It's another thing to stay in shape regularly in general, right? So in yeah. the Big Brother house, you have limited access. Uh, you got to get a little creative. So uh, what was your uh, process like to stay in shape in the Big Brother house? And what did you find yourself doing the most? Yeah, in the Big Brother house, there was it was not a lot to work with. I mean, so I don't know. You guys probably know now, but like you only get like the backyard two times a week. Like everyone probably thinks you have it because I did. I thought we had it all the time. And I like when I found that out, I was like, no, um, the pool's way too small, so I can't train in there. I can't do laps. Like, my arms touch the ground. Like, it's so shallow, too. Um, and then the weights, like, they go up to 40. So I was able to do, like, you know, upper body stuff and some squats. Um, and then the inside gym, though, so it's, like, the highest weight is 15 pounds. So I can't do much with those weights. Um, I tried to get creative with the cords, but it just wasn't working well. I did biking, like, the first, like, five, six weeks, uh, the seats were super uncomfortable. I hated sitting on that for like an hour. Um, and it's really boring because you're just stationary and you're just staring at a wall with a mirror, looking at yourself the whole time. Um, so 
So it was really hard to find ways to get creative in that house. Um, because I do a lot of my workouts with the uh, Olympic bars, uh, you know, like deadlifts, like all those things, hang cleans. And we didn't have that really. Um, so yeah, like I didn't work out much after like <laughs> six weeks. So, you know, I started, you know, I was like, you know what? I signed up to be on this show. Like I'm going to play the game. I'm not going to worry about that extra stuff because I can, I can take care of it outside the house when I'm done. Um, Cause that was, that was the hard part too, going through it. Cause I'm someone that wakes up, grinds five hours every day and I didn't have that. So I had to find a way to like make up for that or figure out something else. So let's get to the question that all big brother super fans are, probably want Nick and I to ask you uh, very, very early on in the house, you developed a really strong bond with Riley. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that the rug was kind of swept out from underneath you because Riley was evicted in week two and you didn't really have the opportunity to see her in person until finale night. Yeah. Now you guys reconnected on finale night. Uh, you guys have hung out with each other and seen each mm -hmm. other outside the house since that point. So uh, describe the, the bond again, the friendship, the relationship that you share with Riley, getting to know her, meeting her. Mm -hmm. And uh, where are you guys at right now? Yeah. So Riley was obviously very attractive. I was, attracted to her right on the spot and then on top of that she has a great personality she's super funny goofy um she's just a really cool person deep down and I clicked with her right away and obviously when I went on the show I didn't want to show Mance obviously because I know that puts a big heart on your back but like we had so many great conversations I think well you know when people are on high emotions you kind of connect with people really fast and she was definitely on high emotion because she was being put up the block right away being targeted before even her week of eviction was happening. Um, so we hung out a lot. And the thing too, is what I really appreciate from her is she like kind of gave up a little bit of her game to make sure I was okay. Like to make sure, because I can't hear what's going on around the house a lot is I'm still kind of uncomfortable because none of the house guests kind of understand how I cooperate and stuff because I can't hear everything. And I, I don't think they like, they knew, they know now, but they didn't in the beginning because they haven't had that experience of, being around a deaf person. So like, I kind of felt left out a lot in the beginning and I just kind of felt like I was lacking a lot of the social game. And Riley went out of her way to help me. Like we were up like three, 4 a.m. every night talking about game and life as well. But like, it was a lot about just the game catching me up. And that pop, that definitely put a target on her back because a lot of people saw this as a showman that was gonna form and she's very competitive, I'm very competitive and that's a scary duo. And Honestly, like if she had stayed in, I definitely would have been booted because usually they take the guys out first. And because that's what we did <laughs> for the other showman's is, you know, we booted the guys out first. Um, so I think her leaving week two definitely sucked, but it also helped my game in a lot of ways. Yeah, I would say she kind of was your shield a little bit there. And for better or worse, it took you all the way till the end of the game. And like I yeah. said at the beginning, I think you had an incredibly strong resume. I think it was a difficult decision for the jury between you and Jag. So I want to talk about Jag uh, winning the final HOH. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, he made a decision. It was an honorable decision. We had him on the podcast here. He was always going to make that decision to mm -hmm. evict Bowie Jane last, send her to jury. Did you personally have any doubt in your mind uh, that Jag would be the uh, Bowie Jane would be the one to be evicted? Were you guys so tight that in your mind you were thinking like, all right, no matter what, I'm going to be sitting in that final two chair uh, at the end? Yeah, I think at final five, I felt that. But then once it was like me and Felicia, I got a little worried. Um, but at the same time, in the back of my head, I was like, okay, me and Jack have a really good bromance. We are tight. We've always talked to each other about loyalty and integrity and trusting each other. And this is how we got this far. And I obviously think the best of everyone first. So like, I'm thinking, okay, he's not going to backstab me because I literally saved his game. He wouldn't have been here the last six, six, eight weeks if it wasn't for me. So I was thinking I'm going to bank off that and he's going to continue to keep his word. But I definitely was nervous because the, like when I was final five, everyone in that house was saying, you're playing the best game. You're going to win this whole thing. And I'm like, that's such a compliment, but that is such a threat at the same time. And that's what gets really scared because I'm like, who am I going to trust the most now? There's only four of us left, you know, and it gets scary, obviously. And I know once I won that HOH, I have to make the best decision to keep me alive the week after that. 
And that's where I got a little scared because I was like, I can't play HOH. Anyone can get thoughts in their head and just be like, you know what, just kick them out. Um, but yeah, I'm glad Jack didn't, didn't, didn't uh, go back on his word. Um, he stayed loyal because I was, I was, I never obviously had the chance because I didn't win the final HOH, but I was going to do the same with him and I was going to take him to the final two with me. Yeah, I mean, maybe not so much Derek and Cody, but you two guys definitely over time in the Big Brother house mm -hmm. developed that strong bond. Uh, it was very, very noticeable into the final two. Uh, so you talk about playing with loyalty and integrity. I mean, everybody knows that was Jag's MO, but I mean, you played a pretty loyal and game with integrity yourself. So, you know, kudos to you there. I want to talk you. about Jag's final speech, what he said what resonated and in, like in comparison to the final speech that you gave. Yeah. I mean, I obviously know I fumbled the bag on the speech. I sucked on that one. Um, that's like another thing, you know, I get very nervous on the spot. It's live. I can't hear everything that they're saying. So I'm like, Oh, well, the question you really asked. Um, do you think, do you think that ultimately cost you or do you think the jury was set on voting for Jack? I don't know. I don't know. If they vote, like already had their votes settled before the speeches and everything. Um, I definitely could have campaigned a lot better for myself because I kind of just, that's the thing, like I'm an athlete and like, I just grown up to always kind of be humble. So I wasn't going to go up there and speak and be like, I did this, this, and this and that. Like, I was just trying to say like, I'm a loyal player. Y'all trusted me this whole game. I made it this far. There's a reason why I made it this far. And you know, I, I, I went first too. So I had no idea what, how the speech was going to go in that direction. Um, and then like when he started going off, I was like, crap, I should have done way better. Um, and like we talked before and I was like, I promise you, like if I'm in the final two, it's you and me, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be anti-Jag. I'm going to be pro Matt. I'm just going to talk about myself. Um, so I think, I don't know the situation with like how the vote really happens. Um, but I did feel like I had people's vote. Um, cause I mean, I know Corey had told me before he got evicted, I was playing the best game. And then Cameron also had said that. Um, and so I was banking on their votes too. Um, yeah. Well, it's all history now, and you know you guys are loyal to each other till the end, and you both made some money, so can't, you can't <laughs> complain that much. You got you got to the end, and and that's it. The, everything that was in your hands was in your hands, and you live it up up to there afterwards. And then after a while, you get back in your hands your phone. So what was it like turning your phone back on for the first time? How many notifications, emails? How many followers now on Instagram and stuff? <laughs> what was that like for you? I feel like I'm a grandma because I like look at this thing, the device and I'm like, how do I use this again? I was in the house. I was like, I actually don't know my lock code. And I was like trying to remember if I like muscle memory. <laughs> it has been so long. I was like, don't even know now. Um, and then, yeah, when I got into it, it cause like, and I'm not trying to like brag about it. Cause like, I don't like doing that. Like I had 5,000 followers before I came in and then now I have 124 K so like, it just, yeah, like all of a sudden, and now it's just, you know, DMs, like I turned my notifications off because it's just constantly like on the phone and it distracts me because I'm very ADHD. So like turn the notifications off and stuff. But um, it's been, it was really cool seeing a phone just because I haven't been able to talk to anyone else in the outside world. I haven't been able to call my friends, like all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Cause like, there was just so much that it was also nice though, like being in the house, waking up and you don't have to worry about your phone. You don't have to worry about social media. You don't have to worry about anything, but just that house in the game. So you don't have to give names, but have you been contacted yet for some like really crazy, like prog promotion? Like, Hey Matt, we want you to promote this in exchange for this. Any, any wacky offers come your way at this point? Uh, I've got a couple, um, but like, it's all so new to me. Yeah. So like, uh, I'm just trying to dealing with it over time slowly just because I, you know, never had these opportunities before. So like, I want to make sure I go write about these things, you know, like I got like this, like sex one. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. Like <laughs> I'm going to have to, <laughs> gonna have to turn those ones down. Um, Cause I'm like, okay, CBS is a family show. Like I can't be doing that. Right. Um, you know, uh, but it, it's exciting seeing those scenes because even being a pro swimmer, the only, the best I could get is just literally swimming stuff. And like, now I got this, you know, other opportunity to get other stuff. And that's not just related to swimming. So that's a, that's a really cool opportunity to see that's happening. Absolutely. All right. And you get out of the house, you start meeting all these new people. 
who is the the coolest person you've been able to meet or at least interact with maybe virtually or in person because of the fact that you were on Big Brother? Um, I think there's so many because like what was overwhelming was the first day we all go to uh, the finale night. We go to Tajrix and it's it's like CBS people there, you know, it's people from the circle, people from Love Island, people from Big Brother's past season and stuff. And like, I know them obviously for years. And then they, I'm like, they don't know who I am. And like, they're like, Matty Ice, Matt. And I'm like, wait, what? And like, so they know me now. So that was a really cool thinking uh, experience. Um, I hanged out with uh, Kylan for a week. Uh, we went to the LA Kings games together. Um, so I was hanging out with him for a week. And then I obviously came back here. Um, but there was, there's just a lot of people I've been in touch with um, all over. I think the BB uh, family is just super close. I've had people from uh, the challenge as well, reaching out to me, messaging me. Uh, that's really cool. Cause it's not just big brothers, you know, survivor, the circle, big, uh, big, big brother challenge people all just kind of connected. And it's really cool seeing that. So that was our next question. The challenge. How do you think you'll fare on the challenge? Would you be down for going on it? Uh, if you did go on it, you know, we're looking at your castmates here as far as who's going to probably be asked to go, maybe. Uh -huh. uh, we're thinking that, you know, Riley's probably would be the, the top girl to be asked along with America. So maybe maybe yeah. that would work to your disadvantage there. But what do you think about the challenge? Uh, I think the challenge is hardcore. And I love that because I would totally love to do that because that is a lot of physical. Big Brother has physical, but it has a lot of other stuff in it. And, and Big Brother, I kind of had to throw a lot of the comps because I was perceived as a physical threat day one when I won the first thing. And I was like, okay, I've got to take it back. I've got to let my pride and ego aside and play social. But on the challenge, I'd be able to do a lot more physical and actually be able to try my best. And yeah, and at a swimming fun. challenge, you would just destroy everybody. Oh, yeah. And I saw it was like, yeah, was so <laughs> fun. I'm like, that's I got that in the bag. Like, <laughs> like I, that's, that's what I want to just flex up on. <laughs> What about the amazing race with Riley? Uh, I mean, if, if they want that, then I'm down. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm down, you know. Um, How about Survivor, Matt? I've, I've almost made Survivor, and I wanted yeah. to do it. Um, I think I like the fact that it's 26 days now. Um, just because I was in the house for 100 days, and that kind of wore me out. So I was like, that's so long. Um, so I'm like, okay. If Sari says Big Brother's harder. That's I was going to say, call up Mama Sari and be like, hey, I want to be on Survivor. Right, right. And, and I was talking to Sari a lot because me and Sari had a really good relationship. And she always talked about like, she would always be like aligned with so the guys that were like me and Survivor going final two. And she was always like, yeah, it's always you guys that would be complaining about food and just starving. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be starving out there. But it would be really cool to do that because I think I've got what it takes as well, you know that mental the mentality i have is being an athlete and there's a lot of challenges there's all sorts of things um so yeah i mean i am open for anything all right we'll see joe i think the challenge usa season three is going to be some uh some great competitors and i think uh matt, matt might be asked there i want to see some people like maybe like Heisman in there to mix things up because he would just he's actually i mean other than you i thought he was the best uh physical you know, throughout the house. I thought the beast, like, I mean, we talked about it. Like, it was a meme at that point in the house. We would just talk about, oh, I should going to pull through that door and he's going to kick her ass the next three, four challenges if he comes back in. Like, high swim is, he, he had a good run. It was short, but he was running it up. And, like, and that was the problem. If you, 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 you show your cards too early in the game, you're going to be a big target and you're going to make it easy for people to just boot you out. Uh -huh. uh, but I think he would do well on the challenge for sure. All right, so as this episode's airing right now, the Reindeer Games are going on on CBS. So we we, we asked Bowie Jane. We asked, we're going to ask you. We Nobody seems to know who's going to be on the show from your season. So who do you who would you think would be the most entertaining to watch in that? I think who would be the most entertaining to watch on that? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Because, like, for me, I just think – uh I feel like it's gonna be Cameron. I that's feel like a, that's Cameron. what I we said. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think Cameron. Um, a little redemption, right? 
America's yeah, favorite house. That, yeah, like I think, yeah, I think Cameron, uh, maybe, maybe Heisman would be good at that. Um, I don't know. I think it goes, a lot of people could do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe you start us off, Joe. Maybe it's going to be Matt who's in the reindeer games. Could maybe it's you. Uh, maybe, maybe it's you. Yeah. I was going to say, know. maybe he signed a non disclosure and he just can't say it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> We'll I'm see. Gonna we'll see as it, as it plays out. Matt, this has been great so far. In your life or your career, what has been your you know right moment? What we mean by that is a time or place where you wanted to do something, you asked somebody for advice. Uh, they said, Matt, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. And you were like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And ultimately, in the end, I'm going to show you why it is that I'm right. I, th- I think I was definitely slept on like big brother i don't think people thought i could have done it because they're like it's it's a house full of whispers like literally like and that drove me insane but like i knew that was the biggest challenge i was gonna have to face and biggest obstacle and i was willing to take it because that's just what i do i push barriers and i find something to take on and i and i do it and that was you know i've been doubted in swimming too you know now i've got five death world records you know like the doubters push me, you know, that makes me want to just go prove myself even more. And that's how I've always been as an athlete. And so when I went on to big brother, that was my biggest goal is just to prove everyone a deaf person could win, but you know, I didn't win, but I got to final two. And that was farther than I thought, because I honestly didn't even think I was going to make jury. You're eight away from 30. You're now a reality television star. You went from 5,000 followers to hundred thousand followers. Matt, all I know is you could call out the haters uh, and you continue you continue to break barriers. So we're so happy that you joined us. This was super, super cool. Um, we appreciate your time. We wish you the best of luck in everything. Uh, we definitely see some more reality TV in your future and definitely some more medals. Uh, we'll be following up with you uh, with your career going forward. And what we do here is we always give our guests the last word. So Uh, If there's anything else that you would personally like to share uh, or promote for yourself, uh, by all means, go ahead. We loved having you on. This was a lot of fun. Hopefully, Nick and I will be able to someday meet you and hang out with you in person. Uh, But yeah, so the last words are all yours. I just want to say, I mean, thank you to you guys for having me on. And also thank you to all the fans and supporters that have watched me throughout season 25 of Big Brother, because that means the world to me. And I'm just glad to get that feedback after everything. And that makes my day because I just wanted to be an advocate and I, that was my goal and to see all the love and support I got outside of the game after everything means the world to me. All right, Matt, this has been great. Great last words. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Time of year <laughs> for this episode of You Know I'm Right for our very special guest, Matt Klotz, my co-host Joe Calvrice. I'm Nick Durst and this has been You Know I'm Right. Mm-hmm.